there was a handout passed around. Is there any, anyone in the room who doesn't have the handout? If they don't, it's off on the table here, on the front. If you don't have one, the four-page handout. Um, this presentation. My name is Daniel McGonigal. This presentation is on the law by Frederick Bastiat. Uh, this is one of the translations of his 1850 pamphlet. And this is the one that we have available here. And uh, there's another translation done on the same uh, book, The Law. This one's by Von Mises Institute. The one we have here is by the uh, Foundation for Economic Education. Frederick Bastiat. Uh, you should all, all have a copy of the handout. Important note. Um, what I'm reading here from the four pages, uh, when I say the end of government or the end of civil government, that means the purpose of government. End means purpose. Next, uh, I'd like to provide an answer to the age-old philosophical question. Why do we have to know this stuff? Uh, Mr. Shirtliff or Dr. Blumenfeld could give a great answer to that question, but I'm going to bring in the big dog, the top gun, commanding general during the war for independence and our first president, to provide the answer to why do we have to know this stuff. This is an excerpt from uh, uh, George Washington's first annual address to Congress, January 8th, 1790. So this is all in the handout. Uh, it's the, it's the uh, indented paragraph there from Washington's address on the first page. Knowledge is in every country the surest basis of public happiness in one in which the measures of government receive their impressions so immediately from the sense of the community as in ours it is proportionally essential to the security of a free constitution it contributes in various ways by convincing those who are entrusted with the public administration that every valuable end of government is best answered by the enlightened confidence of the people and by teaching the people themselves to know and to value their own rights, to discern and provide against invasions of them, to distinguish between oppression and the necessary exercise of lawful authority, between burdens proceeding from a disregard to their convenience and those resulting from the inevitable exigencies of society. Exigencies is another word for emergencies to discriminate the spirit of liberty from that of licentiousness, cherishing the first, avoiding the last, and uniting a speedy but tempered vigilance against encroachments with an inviolable respect to the laws. Okay, that's George Washington. His first address, 1790. Um, from the words transition from the words of Washington transitioning into the law first published as a pamphlet in June 1850 written by Frederick Bastiat containing the truths that are eternal Frederick Bastiat 1801 1850 was a French economist statesman and author he did most of his writing during the years just before and immediately following French Revolution of February 1848. This was the period when France was rapidly returning to complete socialism. As a deputy to the Legislative Assembly, Mr. Bastier was studying and explaining each socialist fallacy as it appeared, and he explained how socialism must inevitably degenerate into communism. The law, his pamphlet, is here presented again because the same situation exists in America today as in the France of 1848. The same socialist, communist ideas and plans that were then adopted in France are now sweeping America. The explanation and arguments 
then advanced against socialism by Mr. Basquiat, ah, word for word, equally valid today. Now that's quoting from the introduction in the book. Um, I've got a question. When did Karl Marx publish his Communist Manifesto? Any, any hands? Good. Yep, okay, both correct. Very good. So that was the same year as the, Fr the French Revolution in France, 1848. So the law was published two years later, 1850. Um, the following excludes, includes excerpts from Bastias the Law. There's a website there uh, which is identical to the, the Red Book. Um, Hard copy translation, I already mentioned that. I'm going to focus on some of the key phrases contained herein. Life, liberty, and property. What is the law? Common defense, collective defense, common force. The oxymoronic, legal plunder. And what is liberty? Raise, raise your hand if you know what an oxymoron is. Okay, about uh, almost half, maybe a third of the group. Okay. Uh, an oxymoron is a phrase containing contradictory terms. Two things that, that together as one would appear to be impossible or should be impossible. Legal plunder is an example of an oxymoron that exists and is in fact common today. If legal plunder is an oxymoron, then so is socialism. Okay. Selected quotes, direct quotes from the law by Bastiat. Life is a gift from God. We owe from God the gift of life, physical, intellectual, and moral life. Life, faculties, or abilities, production, in other words, individuality, liberty, property, this is man. These three gifts from God precede all human legislation and are superior to it. Life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Okay, what is law? Let me say first, you, it's op optional up to everyone here. You can either follow along what I'm, what I'm reading in your handout, or you can just listen and follow the sh very brief outline that's on the screen. You have that option to do whatever works good for you. Because, but you're gonna take this home with you, you can always refer to this later. Um, what is law? What then is law? It is the collective organization or the individual right to lawful defense. <laughs> Each of us has a natural right from God to defend his person, his liberty, and his property. If every person has the right to defend, even by force, his person, his liberty, and his property, then it follows that a group of men, or a group of women, I'll add, or a group of men and women, have the right to organize and support a common force to protect these rights constantly. Since an individual cannot lawfully use force against the person, liberty, or property of another individual, then the common force, for the same reason, cannot lawfully be used to destroy the person, liberty, or property of individuals or groups. Nothing can be more evident than this. The law is the organization of the natural right of lawful defense. This common force is to do only what the individual forces have a natural and lawful right to do, to protect person, persons, liberties, and properties, to maintain the right of each, and to cause justice to reign over us all. Okay, um, before continuing with more of quotes, direct quotes from Bastias the Law, I'm going to stop right there, make some important connections. Um, Bastiat's natural uh, right. Quote, Bastiat's quote, not so right from God to defend his person, his liberty, and his property is the same principle as the laws of nature and nature's God and the self-evident truth that we are endowed by our Creator 
with certain inalienable rights that are among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Cited, both those cited in the Declaration of Independence. For, secondly, Bastiat's collective defense, collective organization, and common force are the same as the common defense in the preamble and the common defense in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1 of the U.S. Constitution. We know the common defense from the recital of the preamble at, 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 in the morning at 750, with the raising and lowering of the flag. Okay, thirdly, Bastiat's collective organization of rights in common force to defend life, liberty, and property is the same as Samuel Adams' common defense of rights to life, liberty, and property in the 1772 Boston Printed Correspondence Report, the rights of the colonists. Fourthly, Bastiat's definition of the law being the collective organization of rights in common force to defend life, liberty, and property is the same principle as Samuel Adams' report, government was instituted for the purposes of common defense. The grand end, I told you what end means, the grand end of civil government from the very nature of its institution is for the support, protection, and defense of those very rights, the principles of which are life, liberty, and property. Okay, therefore, as Bastiat says, the law is the collective common defense of life, liberty, and property, and if, as Samuel Adams says, the common defense of life, liberty, and property is the grand end or purpose of civil government, then the law equals the grand end or purpose of civil government. And the important deduction from that is that if any law or any government action violates rights to life, liberty, and property instead of defending them, then the law would be a perversion of law. And that government action would be illegitimate action. Okay, this common defense principle is a connection and similarity shown between the four documents. 1772 Samuel Adams Report, Rights of Colonists, the 1776 Declaration, the 1787 Constitution, and Bosnia's the Law in 1850. Uh, online links to all those four are in the handout. These four and more documents are also addressed in my book here, available, Execute the Laws to Restore the Republic. In part six in this book, I go through more than four. I go through six, seven, eight documents, taught specifically in part six, the common defense. This week, only uh, any sale of the book, five dollars per sale per book will go directly to Camp Constitution. And this book is published by Camp Constitution Press. Okay, is there anybody, and don't be shy about raising your hand, is anybody who didn't understand the connection of the four documents of the principle of common defense of rights to life, liberty, and property. Anybody have any questions right before I go on? Any questions from anybody on that? Good, excellent, okay, very good. Um, okay, continue with Bastia. Oh, I already did that one, I forgot to switch the screen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me go back so you can see that briefly. Okay, the complete perversion of the law. But, this is Bastia, but unfortunately, law has been known to exceed its proper functions. And it has done so not merely in some inconsequential and debatable matters. The law has gone further than this. It has acted in direct opposition to its own purpose. The law has been used to destroy its own objective. It has been applied to annihilating the justice that it was supposed to maintain, to limiting and destroying the rights which its real purpose was to respect. The law has placed the collective force at the disposal of the unscrupulous who wish, without risk, to exploit the person, liberty, and property of others. It has converted plunder into a right 
in order to protect plunder, and it has converted lawful defense into a crime in order to punish lawful defense. <coughs> Property and plunder. Man can live and satisfy his wants only by labor, by the application of his faculties and abilities to natural resources. This process is the origin of property. But it is also true that a man may live and satisfy his wants by seizing and consuming the products of the labor of others. This process is the origin, the origin of plunder. Since man is naturally inclined to avoid work and labor, it follows that men will resort to plunder whenever plunder is easier than work. It is evident that the proper purpose of law is to use the power of its collective force to stop this fatal tendency to plunder instead of to work. All the measures of the law should protect property and punish plunder. The answer is to restrict the law. Restrict law to protecting all persons, all properties, and all, all, all liberties and all properties. Law is law to be nothing more than the Organized combination of the individual's right to self-defense. Law to be the obstacle, the check, the punisher of all oppression and plunder. The fatal idea of legal plunder. But, on the other hand, imagine that this fatal principle has been introduced under the pretense of organization, regulation, protection, or encouragement, the law instead takes property from one person and gives it to another. The law takes the wealth of all and gives it to the few. The law defends plunder. Now this is what this is not the law, the real definition, the truth of the law. This is Bastia talking about the perversion of the law. The law defends plunder. Sometimes the law defends plunder and participates in it. Sometimes the law places the whole apparatus of judges, police, and prisons at the service of the plunderers and treats the victim when he defends himself as a criminal. In short, there is what's called a legal plunder. Socialism is legal plunder. It is upon the law that socialism itself relies. Socialists desire to practice legal plunder. Socialists, like all other monopolists, desire to make the law their own weapon. For when plunder is abetted by the law, it does not fear your courts in your prisons. Rather, it may call upon them for help. The choice before us, the question of legal plunder must be settled once and for all, and there are only three ways to settle it. We must make our choice among limited legal plunder, where the few plunder the many, universal legal plunder, where everybody plunders everybody, no legal plunder, where nobody plunders anybody. This is the principle of justice, peace, order, stability, harmony, and logic. The proper function of the law, which necessarily requires the use of force, rationally to be used for anything except protecting the rights of everyone. I defy, this is bust, I defy anyone to extend it beyond this purpose without perverting it and consequently turning might against right. We've heard that phrase before. I've heard that somewhere before. Might against right. Um, this is the most fatal and most illogical social perversion that can possibly be imagined. It must be admitted that the true solution, so long searched for in the area of social relationships, is contained in these simple words. Law is organized justice. What is liberty? 
The political struggle that we witness is the instinctive struggle of all people toward liberty. And what is this liberty whose very name makes the heart beat faster and shakes the world? In short, is not liberty the freedom of every person to make full use of his faculties and abilities so long as he does not harm, he or she does not harm other persons while doing so? Finally, is not liberty the restricting of the law only to its rational sphere of organizing the right of the individual to lawful self-defense, of punishing injustice? Then, then uh, Bastiat emphasizes this last sentence here. Law is the common force organized to act as an obstacle of injustice. In short, law is justice. Proper legislative functions. The legislator does not have absolute power over our persons and property. The existence of persons and property preceded the existence of the leg legislator. And his function is only to guarantee their safety. The function of law is to protect the free exercise of these rights and to prevent any person from interfering with the free exercise of these same rights by any other person. Since law necessarily requires the support of force, its lawful domain is only in the areas where the use of force is necessary. This is justice. Every individual has the right to use force for lawful self-defense. It is for this reason that the collective force which is only the organized combination of the individual forces, may lawfully be used for the same purpose, and it cannot be used legitimately for any other purpose, which I talked about before, such as legal plunder, illegitimate acts of government. Law is solely the organization of the individual right of self-defense, which existed before law was formalized. Law is justice. Basis for stable government. Law is justice. Basta keeps repeating this uh, phrase throughout in his various uh, uh, short arguments. Uh, in this proportion, a simple and enduring government can be conceived. <coughs> Excuse me. In this proposition, I said proportion. In this proposition, a simple and enduring government can be conceived. And I defy anyone. Bastiat speaking, to say how even the thought of revolution of insurrection of the slightest uprising could arise against the government whose organized force was confined only to suppressing, suppressing injustice. The path to dignity and progress. Law is justice. Again, and it is under the law of justice, under the reign of right, under the influence of liberty, safety, stability, and responsibility, that every person will attain his real worth in, in her real worth in the true dignity of his and her being. It is only under this law of justice that mankind will achieve, slowly, no doubt, but certainly, God's design for the orderly and peaceful progress of humanity. I invariably reach this one conclusion. The solution to the problems of human relationships is to be found in liberty. Let us now try liberty. God has given to men all that is necessary for them to accomplish their destinies. He has provided a social form as well as a human form of persons so constituted that they will develop themselves harmoniously in the clean air of liberty. And now that the legislators and do-gooders have so futilely, that word, futilely, futilely, have so futilely inflicted so many systems upon society, may they finally end where they should have begun. May they reject all systems 
and try liberty. For liberty is an acknowledgement of faith in God and his works. Yeah. The end.